Today, let's talk about the old French song, which is Hands Down, my favorite movement from the whole album. I remember playing it when I was, what, six or seven. I fell in love with it then. I fell in love with the piano from playing this song, and I've never fallen out of love. There are few movements that are just this beautiful. All that said, it is also one of the easier pieces to play. Um, there is a great deal of repetition, and um, the whole piece can pretty much be taught by rote. There are, of course, complications, as there always are. First of all, there is the interesting texture with three parts. The melody in the right hand, and in the left hand, we have the boudon, or the held bass, which functions as a drone, and we have a secondary voice. Getting the balance and the texture exactly right is not an easy proposition. The bass note itself must be loud enough to last through several measures, um, but not be bangy or sound obnoxious. And the middle voice should be audible and song-like, but never sticking out. And above all, the melody needs to sing and to soar. I think that, in fact, it is the singing sound of the melody, which is the most important lesson that Tchaikovsky has the student learn in this piece. Cantabile playing is something that is so very important to the romantic piano style and to Russian school of piano playing. So this is something we need to concentrate on. How to make the notes truly sing, how to make the melody soar without actually hitting the notes or on the other hand becoming too quiet. Here we have to think about how to use our hands. We teach our students to round out nicely and play on the fingertips. But that doesn't really work, does it? We get a sound that is brittle and that doesn't sing. So instead, even at this earlier stage of piano playing, it's time to teach the children that sometimes we curve the fingers and play at a 90 degree angle to the keys, and sometimes we don't. What works much better when we have a flowing melody is to use a great deal more of the finger, the entire cushy part perhaps, and have the fingers considerably flatter. Not that, of course, but applying much more of the fingertip to the key. When that happens, we can press the key rather than hit it, creating a slower and more beautiful attack. But immediately, we have a problem. When the fingers are rounded, they're all pretty much equal lengths. When the fingers are flatter, suddenly the lengths are quite different, and we have to compensate for the difference in lengths by turning our wrist towards the shorter fingers. So we have something like this. Did you notice how my hand was constantly in motion? Did you also notice that I did not need to add a great deal in terms of phrasing or dynamics because my hand did absolutely all of the work. However, we should always think at least about the phrasing and the dynamics. So let's take a look at the melody. The melody in this phrase is very classical in nature in that it is divided into two short groups and a long group. So short group number one, short group number two, and then finally the long group. Once we see what the phrase is made of, we can now design its structure intelligently. So each of the groups, be it short or long, need to have their own shape 
In other words, the last note probably should round out, so it sounds elegant and beautiful. But between the three groups, there are very well-defined relationships. So the first group is soft, then the second group is more excited, higher, and a little bit louder, and the third group is the loudest, and then it diminuendos down. I think of this as first group is baby bear, then the second group is mama bear, and the third group is papa bear, which then comes down all the way back down to baby, and suddenly the structure is clear. And then there is this little middle section, which stops sounding like a song and sounds a great deal more like a dance. throughout the pieces. Generally, we have talked a lot about how to create short, sharp staccato, but here we have something completely different. This is the first time, if we follow the order of the album, that we arrive at a staccato which should probably be produced with the wrist. I think this staccato imitates the plucking of a string on a lute or a guitar. So doing the short business doesn't work at all. So this is where we are going to be active with the wrist and much less active with the finger. I find that it helps with my students if they actually imagine plucking a string. Gently. structure is also important. We have our beautiful phrase appear first, then it is repeated again, then we have a contrasting section, and finally the first phrase comes back. This is called bar form actually, if anybody is interested, and a lot of um, popular songs are written in this form. Um, so Tchaikovsky invents popular music? Who knows? We have a lot of options in a structure like this. So if we think of the first repetition of the phrase as the default, then the second repetition needs to be somehow different. The traditional interpretation is to make the second phrase very quiet, like a faraway echo. Then of course we have that beautiful middle section, which is something of a dance. And then the original A section comes right back. And we can choose to make it softer, louder, or somehow different than we played it the first and second time. Probably ritardando at the end to show us that the piece is ending is the most intelligent solution. 